Hello. Hey, there's people on here. What's going on? Welcome, welcome. Hello. So I am here in my studio. It's uh, beautiful. Hey, Tyler's Dave, your golfing buddy. I have a golfing buddy named Dave. I do like golf. Uh, I'm just hanging out. I thought I'd go live. It'd be fun. Do some stuff. Talk about trees. Uh, talk about things like hair nets and uh, shit that no one cares about. What have I been doing lately? Today, lately, I've been doing uh, a lot of acoustic stuff for different channels and different stations. I just recorded one yesterday for something that's coming out in May, so I'm sure you will um, get info on that pretty soon. Uh, I have one on Tuesday with a station called CJ in Calgary in Canada. I'm going to perform some songs on that live, so I'm sure you'll hear about that. I don't remember. I think it's at noon Pacific. So I'm not sure, but I'm sure you'll get some info on that. If, you want, if you'd like to watch, I try not to do the same songs every time, so we'll see what I do on uh, when I do that. But yeah, this is... Uh Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. Let's, tr let's jam it. How's it go? I think it's like... I think that's it. You can get a fast car, so flashy and fly away. You know what's crazy is Fast Car was the first song I ever learned to play on guitar. That's it. And I was probably 13 years old at this friend's house. His name was Michael Salehoff, and his dad had an acoustic guitar, and it was a piece of crap. And I think that was when it, whenever that song came out, so whatever year that was. Um... And I picked up his guitar and I would try to learn how to play it while I was listening to it. And then from there on, I, I uh, learned some other stuff. Then the second song I learned how to play was Stairway to Heaven from from Led Zeppelin. Which, uh, which I'm, I think I, I learned it at this buddy's my house name. His name was Chad Crowder. Uh, he was a football player. But the one thing we had in common is that he was a guitar player, and he taught me how to play Stairway to Heaven. So I took it home and I showed my dad, Dad, check this out. And he was blown away that I could remember it. And then he called his guitar player up, because my dad was in a band. And he was like, my son just played Stairway to Heaven. And then, uh, and then, and then we just got started on some other stuff, some other songs. Hello from Ukraine. Spasiba. Dasvidanya. That's all I know. 
I did learn some other stuff, but you you know what? Uh, in Canada, there is uh, in the prairies there is a huge where Joe, our drummer, uh, grew up. There is a huge like Ukrainian uh, community. So uh, growing up, at least in Canada, we used to eat some Ukrainian food. And down here in California, it's very hard to find. Um, Polish as well, I think. You know what I might do? I don't know about today, but I might. What I might do is uh, just randomly have a fan come on here and then just have them a part of the chat. It's dangerous. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. There's no screening involved, so it could be bad. But uh, it could be fun, right? I should actually have one of the guys come on today. Maybe I'll slowly but surely ramp these up until, like, all of a sudden it's just like, everybody, welcome. And then have someone like, you know, I don't know, whoever. So, I don't know. Give me anybody you think I should have on here. Let me know. Um, other than that, that's it. So, this studio here is called The Panic Room. Uh, I'll give you a little tour. It's there's there's different rooms. The other room is actually uh, is all torn apart because we're doing nothing. We're all quarantined. I decided to do a bunch of house projects, and one of them was to che replace the ceiling in the live room. So there's some drywall in there, and it's all ripped apart and it's plastic and everything. This is the control room, which is pretty much. Uh, where I record a lot of shit. So I've got some amps in here. Um, I've got some other stuff in the other room as well. I don't actually use these as much as you would think. Yeah, there's a lamp here, by the way, because when I record uh, acoustic stuff, there's not enough light in here. So I bring a lamp in from inside. But I actually ordered one of those ring lights that, like, all the YouTuber or all the uh, Instagram people have, the ring light. I actually ordered one because... It, I get so many requests for performances and interviews and stuff like that. It's pretty much every day. Then I'm like, I should get one of these ring lights and then I can, uh, it actually looks really good. And then I don't look like I'm 80 years old and I just got out of a, I don't know, a bar four in the morning or something. So yeah, I got some amps in here, which I don't do use as much. The best amp I have, the wizard amp actually sounds fantastic. It's very glassy sounding, but it's definitely, it's ACDC right there. You want to sound like ACDC? That's the amp. The gentleman who built that amp is uh, fantastic. He he builds them all custom for, for well, Angus. Uh, this is my favorite amp. This is the JMP. It's my main. Uh, that's I used to have that on the road. And... Uh, it's got some all these these amps have been uh all recapped and everything but it's funny like some of these some of these uh what should we call it amps boutique amps it's interesting how much they cost because they're all modeled after Marshall or high watts um a majority of them are and they're really expensive they sound really good but you know like I got some of these Marshalls off of eBay for like eight hundred dollars and it doesn't get any better and then i had you know a guy recap them and and, and go through them and and uh buy to do all that kind of stuff that i don't know how to do and then they just sound phenomenal i think there's some russian tubes in this one and it sounds just phenomenal and it costs half the price of a, a brand new amp it's crazy same with guitars too guitars right now are super cheap so uh what else in the studio this you know this is just the control room so it's not very big some guitars this Juno 60, which is badass, there is some stuff on the new record that is this Juno 60. It's hard to hear, but a lot of sub-synth stuff. But this is pretty much like the jump from Van Halen, a lot of that kind of like saw pattern stuff. It sounds so good. Uh, and this actually piano is, uh, I bought this for like 500 bucks and it's super out of tune. But... Um, this is on uh, History of Violence. This is the piano I attracted in here, and you can hear at the end of the, the song.
That's it. That's the piano part at the very end of the song. I got some guitars over there. These are all worth like, I don't know, $500,000 each or something. Especially this one. This was a uh, friend gave me this. It's a ukulele, uh, home, make it yourself ukulele kit. I haven't yet to put it on a song, but there's lots of fucking time to do that now. So, uh, yeah, other than that, I really don't know. I don't do a lot of these live things because I, I have no idea what the fuck to do. You know who does a great Instagram thing is John Mayer. He has, like, amazing guests on, and he writes, like, these ridiculous, stupid songs. Uh, he has a little drum machine, and he writes, like, songs about plastic or something. But they're actually really good songs, and he just, I think he just wings it all. But he should be a host on something, and he has thousands of people look at watches, but he has... Uh, his is really good. Can my smile get any bigger? I don't know. So let's see. Can you play Taylor Swift for us nurses in break right now? Taylor Swift? I don't know any Taylor Swift songs. Hey, from Russia. Hello. Um, I think it's awesome to see these artists in their homes. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is separate from my house, but uh, this is another, but it's nice. There's no windows in here, which gets a little weird, but, uh, and sometimes it can get loud if the gardener is here, but uh, what's really cool is I got this from uh, three doors down, I gave us each one of these when we did a um, Better Life Foundation, we played with them. It's a great foundation that they started years ago. So every year they do the Better Life show, and one year we, uh, we got to play. It was actually, it was great. It was a great time, great memories. It was at a casino, so it was a lot of fun. So we missed those guys, too. Hello from Germany. Zeig mir euer Titten. I know some German. Wir, mir liebe euch. Um... Ein stille, stillen Bier, bitte. That's it. That's all I know. There's people from all the place. Seattle, Czech Republic. We were supposed to be in the Czech Republic in June. I'm sorry, we're not coming. That's canceled. There was a festival over there. Hello from Quebec. We were just in Quebec, actually, uh, in Montreal, which is one of my favorite cities. So great. It was a great show. Uh, we just... Oh, it's on our Instagram. You can watch a little video of uh, World Key Spinning we did live. That was filmed in Montreal. So if you were at our Montreal show and wondering what the hell we were filming, that's what it was. We were filming some live stuff. Hey, from Boston. It's been a while, Boston. Uh, we haven't been there in a while. I, I do like the Bruins. Some good players there. Netherlands, we were planning to go there too. Um, yeah, all over the place. Baton Rouge, which is French for red bat. So there you go. If no one, can you play eight crazy? Did you just put eight crazy nights? Was that what you wrote? Can you play that? No, I don't know enough of uh, like. Alternate songs. I'm back home in Baltimore. I haven't seen you in a while. Baltimore, that's a good town. Play there a lot. I went to a YMCA in Baltimore. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I like that town. It's cool. Do you know how many fans in Iran? No. That's some place we've never been. Oh, Italy is here. Yes, Italy. I know tons of Italian. I like Vaffangulo. I know that one. I know if you're a friend of mine is Italian and you get you get really mad and then sometimes you get really mad you like you slap your arm like that's like a big that's a big one like go fuck yourself. <laughs> ah shit. By the way, if you guys are wondering, I have uh this is for real in uh in just under two hours, I'm having a Zoom meeting with my aunt and my mom to play Yahtzee. It's happening. It's supposed to be, um, I wasn't invited 
yesterday it was supposed to be my two aunts and my mom and then my mom hit me up and said one of the aunts pulled out so <laughs> it's good to know that i'm my mom's backup for zoom yahtzee on a sunday but it'll be fun i'm pretty sure i can destroy my mom and my aunt at yahtzee i'll destroy them what are you missing the most right now? It's definitely touring, 100% touring. Um, we should be on tour right now. I wish I knew where we, were, where we were supposed to be right now, what city. Maybe Milwaukee or something. But, like, man, the great great thing about being in a band is touring and, and uh, making songs, being in the studio and, and writing new songs. It's fun, but... It's it's not it, it really it is like it's it's all about the touring. It's all getting to perform. It really is. It's where it, like we all start in bands, jamming. Um, we don't all start like just writing songs. It's all about jamming. It's all performing. It is something to do with four people in a room, and uh, usually musicians are introverted people. They're usually insecure. And so um, you get together and you find that one thing you all are passionate about and then it just kind of, you can feel it on stage. So for us, it's it's, it's the epitome of, of being, I guess, cathartic, I guess. It's just a, it's something you can't describe to people. And I will say, not to dog on it, but I will say like doing these acoustic things has been, has been really cool, but <laughs> it'll never replace it. Like I know I've been having a lot of discussions with people about, Maybe the future is doing these jam things, Zoom festivals and performances. But if that's the future, man, oh, it's it's going to be tough because you need to be in a place where there's an audience. You can feel it. You can – it's everything about it. It's just the atmosphere and, and uh, the adrenaline and, and just doing – like even now, just staring into a phone is just weird. It's just – it's just odd. But you know what? It's right now. It's the only way to connect. So it's better than nothing. It's and I enjoy getting feedback from you guys. Um, will you play "Wait for Me, Please"? Um, wait for me. I think that's. Those are the lyrics. There by your side, so what to be so far away from you? Yeah, you know what? It's that one thing that that's a song we haven't played in a long time, but I love that song. Um, I was thinking that we, uh, we should try to do some more acoustic stuff from Scars because we don't do a lot of Scars stuff. It's, it's, it's difficult to do a, a lot of that stuff acoustically, but we should try to bring it back. Ted Bundy. I get a lot of requests for Ted Bundy. You know, it's, it's interesting that is becoming a fan favorite. Um, being a lot of people saying they like Ted Bundy. Baby, you know that I love you and death. But I'm never gonna see you again. I th I think that's in day. The great thing about our, our our last two records is that like Dave, you know, each of us just does our own thing. So Dave plays all the guitars on the record, and like, so I don't even know like a lot of the stuff how it goes. <laughs> But I thought it was great, like, you know, Joe has a full setup at home so he can track drums and I'll, I'll, I'll send him ideas. And sometimes I'll put, like, a drum machine on it and be like, something like this, or I won't, and I'll just leave it, like, nothing, just a click track, and I'll be like, go for it. And then he'll put stuff on it. But, um, yeah, this record is really fun to make because, like, me and Dave lived together. And yes, it was romantic. And it was in this two-level kind of flat. They, they call it flats over there in England. It's a two-level place. It was really nice, really badass. And they don't have air conditioning over there. So we first when we first got there, it was so hot. We were like, what the fuck? And we had all the 
all the windows open and doors open. And uh, then we found a room full of fans. They had like eight fans. So then we we're like, ah, so we just set up fans in every room. We got used to it. But uh, I think I'm, we're just spoiled. Um, why did I grab this guitar? I don't even remember how to play it. Baby, you know that I love you to death But I'm never gonna see you again Baby, you know that I love you to death That's not right. That's not the right key. I think it's an A. Feeling high Running low, running low So I need a kick That sounds good. By the way, I, I don't know, I feel weird doing all this, but I'm sure you guys enjoy it. Uh, this guitar I've had forever. This is a Gibson uh, 200, and me and Dave went and bought them on the same day. And we went into a store, and they had two of them, and they're very expensive. I think we paid about five grand each for them. But we just got signed, uh, and there was they had they gave us some money. And I spent all my money. <laughs> I bought a truck. And so we went in and me and Dave were like, let's go buy some badass guitars. So they had these. These are like, I think, the most expensive guitars they had in the store. And so me and Dave, and then one actually had a bunch of finish flaws in it. And Dave liked it. He's like, I'll take that one. I love it. He thought it was really cool. So he took that one and I took this one. And I had no money. So Dave actually had to buy both. And I had to pay him back, which I don't, I'm pretty sure I did. I'm sure he would have made sure I paid him back. But I thought that was pretty cool. It's a good story for this guitar. And so many songs have been written on this guitar, including, say, uh, Santa Monica. A lot of people don't play that right, I see online. It's not just regular chords. It's got like a sus chord where you're just continually kind of pedaling that G. Makes it really sad. Uh, what else? What else is going on? Uh, I cut my own hair. I don't know what else to freaking do. I didn't cut the back because I can't get there. So I've got like, it's almost like a mohawk again. But I think this week I'm going to just shave it all down to like a one or something because then it's just easier it's done but uh things are starting to slowly open up i don't know some of you people watching right now are uh in a place where you're getting back open i know some golf is getting back open so i'm excited about that i know san diego county has just opened back up but here in la uh everything's closed still no golf here everything's still shut down no barbers What's up with the deer? You shoot it? No. No, I would never... I, can't, I couldn't shoot an animal. I would just want to go and hug it. Cradle it like a baby. Try to ride it, maybe. No, I bought that up the street at this, like, secondhand store. I'm obsessed with, like, secondhand stuff. So I'll find something. Even, like, this lamp that I showed you earlier is I got at some secondhand store. It doesn't really smell, but it's getting pretty... pretty getting pretty flaky. Um... And then, uh, yeah, I don't, I, he has a name. I can't remember what his name is. Am I vegan? I'm not vegan. It would, I think it would be hard to be, to be vegan. I think I could become a pescatarian. I do like fish. Um, but you never know. I, yeah, it's easier than ever to become a vegan now. They have so much food, especially down here. There's so many restaurants that I, I and sometimes I go eat vegan food because it's just really good. Some of these restaurants have figured it out pretty good, pretty well. So you can find some good vegan food. Favorite meal? Uh, my go-to is pizza. Uh, I actually ate a full pizza last night. Uh, <laughs> and I'm actually on a uh, fast right now. I'm on a 16-hour fast. I just try, started trying. And, uh, you know, ironically, I have tons of energy. Um, even though I'm hungry, I have tons of energy. I was going to eat, uh, I was supposed to eat at noon. That was 16 hours since the last eight. And that was 16 hour fast. But if I ate, I'd be totally all just lethargic on this 
thing. So, Angel, I'm in love with an angel. Uh... I don't know if you guys have heard. I did a cover, Sting cover. Uh, I don't know if it ever got released. Has anybody heard that song? As a meditation, those he plays. Yeah, anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, you get the, yeah, whatever. That's fine. That's fine. End of the summer. You have that theory shirt. What shirt? Angel? Nice. Yeah. I'm always trying to find, uh, I'm always trying to find a good cover to do, and sometimes it doesn't work. It's interesting is that everyone always wants you to do rock covers. And it's just so boring, and it's not really... It's hard to put character into another rock song, you know what I mean? Like, some bands could pull it off, but I feel like it'd be difficult for us. It would depend on the rock song, but, like, we did an ACDC cover, Mistress for Christmas. Um, I thought it was pretty good, but it just didn't really, like... It sounded like ACDC. Like it's, so I always try to find something that's completely different, and then I kind of put my little thing on it make it a little bluesier or rockier or or do a song that maybe a girl a female sings and then when I, so it sounds different and i think that's it's good i did a, a, a hallelujah it's very similar to not the original leonard cohen but um the, it's very similar to the jeff buckley version which i which is my favorite not dissing the old leonard cohen good canadian boy there unfortunately rest in peace but, uh, yeah, that song actually probably one of the most, uh, responded to covers that we've ever done, which is cool. So it kind of motivates, motivates me to do some, some other, some other songs, but yeah, hallelujah. That's a good one, but that's Kate up here somewhere. So it's way too, long. try to cover some hailstorm. That would be actually pretty cool. That'd be pretty fun. We're good friends with Hailstorm, so it'd be interesting to try to do, like, Miss the Misery. But, um... It wouldn't, it wouldn't sound much different. It would be like a guy trying to sing like Lizzie, which would be an ultimate fail on my part. <laughs> I can fake scream like she can. She real screams, but I'm saying I can do a fake scream to, to sound like her, but... Yeah, they're great. Uh, we've known those guys, no joke, since... Before their first record, they were staying here at the Oakwoods in uh, uh, in L.A., not far actually from my house, and they were uh, just writing songs and writing songs and writing songs. And they all lived there, and the parents, and they had animals. I think they had little pets and stuff in there. And we go hang out, and they've always just been so down to earth, and, and uh, we go barbecue there and swim in the pool. and Yeah, so it's good to see. Cover a Blackstone Cherry. I was we actually did that thing with Blackstone Cherry the other day. Um, Just cover Blackstone Cherry. Cover Breaking Benjamin. Yeah, they got some good songs. Um, we toured Breaking Benjamin, uh, I think it was our second record when they had uh, that big hit come out. Um, Lay your hands on me. Is that the lyric? I just totally, totally, I don't know. But yeah, you know the song from Halo. Yeah. So it was like right at the point where Breaking Benjamin was just like, I think it was their second record. 
Uh, but that's the last tour we did with them. And then, of course, the summer tour coming up with uh, and Bush as well and St. Asonia. So that, that'll be good. I Will Not Bow. That's a good song. I think Diary Jane is probably one of my favorites. That's a good one. He did do a song. Ben did that song, that rain song. Rain, rain, go away. He used to do that every night. Chris Cornell, yeah, that's like one of my favorite uh, favorite singers of all time. I kind of I I kind of ape him a little bit. I don't sound anything like Chris Cornell, but uh, you can't play I can't play Black Hole Sun on here because it's a completely different tuning. It's a completely different tuning. Black Hole Sun. We did a little Black Hole Sun um, on stage at a festival, the Rise, of, Rise Above Festival. We did a little. I was so nervous to do it. Uh, after he passed away, we did a little cut. We did a, like maybe like 30 seconds of it before a song. Um, Lincoln Park. Three Days Grace. Yeah, I've toured a lot with Three Days Grace. Since the beginning, too. We played, um, I think we played in their hometown. They opened for us. And this was, I think, 2002 or something. And they just started. They just, I don't think their first single even hit radio yet. Um, and they opened for us and we played like this bar. And the stage, I think, was like this far, far off the ground. I think my mic stand was on in the crowd because there was no room for it on the stage. And I remember some dude like smashing my mic, hitting me in the face with my mic. And I was like, but those are the places you played back then. Yeah, I remember they opened for us. And they were all open on the whole tour. And I think they were on first of three. And uh, and then their song came out, I Hate Everything About You. That was their first single. And then it came out and I heard it on the radio and I heard it once. I was like, pfft. This is I'm like this is a, a hit song, and then and then I think they went from first of three to to uh, to um, opening uh, direct support for us, and then it became a co-headline, and then they just took off. And uh, but good for them, man. Once again, some good Canadian kids. Do Renegade on TikTok. What's Renegade? Tick, I don't. You know what's funny is I, I'm not the TikTok things. I don't know what is that. Do you just dance on there? You goof around. Why can't you get, dance and goof around on here? I'm confused why there's so many platforms to do the same thing. Is that just an old man talking? Is that what old people do? Tom Petty. Yeah. I love when you toured into Glasgow with Royal Republic. Another one of my favorite bands. So good live. Those guys are great. If you haven't seen them, uh, they tour a lot. Royal Republic, they, I could be mistaken, I, are they from, I think they're Swedish boys. Um, they tour a lot in, in Europe and stuff, but they are really good live, and they're really, they really dress very nice. The singer's got, I think he still has a mustache, but he's got hair like this and a mustache, and he's got this kind of thing going. They're really good. They, yeah, they opened for us uh, when we were over over there and they're just G-Eazy G-Eazy that would be uh, would be great to do something with G-Eazy yeah he's got good hair too Columbia nice we have never been down there uh, I grew up in British Columbia not the same I remember when I first drove down to Los Angeles from British Columbia and I was in a Target parking lot and some dude walked by and saw my license plate and was he saw it said British Columbia and I guess he had no idea where British Columbia was and he's like you drove here and I was like yeah he's like oh my god <laughs> I think I, he thought I was from Columbia or Britain I'm not sure but I, I don't know if a lot of people know where British Columbia is. It's a British Columbia. And there's a lot of British people there, and there's a lot of Colombians. 
So we know we all can speak Spanish in British Columbia, and we all can speak British as well there. Yeah, BC is beautiful. I think B BC is probably hands down one of the most beautiful places in the world. If you do have time to go there, it's nuts. You've got the Rocky Mountains, which is, we share it with Alberta. Uh, but if you go up there, it's, uh, you know, if you can take the Sea to Sky Highway up to Whistler Blackcomb, where they had the Winter Olympics. Insane. It's insane. Some of the places there. And yeah, you come up, come up to British Columbia, you see whales and shit. There's a bunch of wildlife. You can ride bears. There's grizzly bears in your backyard, pets, all that shit. We live in igloos. Well, it's crazy. <laughs> I can't remember why I picked up his guitar. I thought I was going to play something, but I can't remember. Someone asked for a song, and then... Do I like living in L.A.? Yeah, I love it. Um, I love the vibe here. It's, it's, it's very, you know, it's like... Uh, a lot of Canadians move down to dry areas. Like, if you're... Uh, if you, like Joe, our drummer, lives in Vegas, um, but he grew up in Winnipeg, so it makes sense. He just went str pretty much. He just flew straight south, and L.A. California to me is very similar to British Columbia. It's on the west coast. It's on the water. It's on the ocean. Um, it's just warmer, but very similar climate, just warmer. <laughs> so for me, it feels like it's it, well, it is home. I've lived here for years, but yeah. And if you live out east. You live in like Ontario or out there, a lot of people go down to Florida. They go, they stay East Coast. Give us a tour of your tattoos. I have a lot of tattoos. Um, I don't know how many I have. It's got to be, it's probably double digits at this point. Because this thing is, this is multiple tattoos all just put together. And there's one up here that I got on uh, New York Inc. Um... They filmed that for their TV show. Um, so I got a free tattoo out of it. And it's actually really badass. The guy who did it, I don't remember his name, but he had a guy that has a California state tattooed on his face. So if you ever saw that TV show, that was the guy who did the tattoo. Ontario is not East Canada. Yeah, but I'm talking to the whole world. So, yeah, I know. Ontario is uh, considered out east to to everybody that's not in Canada. But yeah, for Canadians, it's not east yet. Yeah. Our true magic lives in Nova Scotia. Uh, we don't go out east very much. We did hit like uh, Nova Scotia in uh, February, um, and and some a little bit out there, New Brunswick, but we haven't been to Newfoundland in a long time. Uh, I, we have been screeched in. The band has been screeched. So if no one knows um, what screeched is, screeched is uh, this thing they do in, I, I, I think it, I'm right when I'm saying this. In Newfoundland, they do this thing where you have to um, recite these lines. You have to kiss a fish. You have to eat a piece of uh, meat. I can't remember what it is, but it tastes like spam. And then you have to take a shot of screech. I think it's whiskey, but you get screeched in, and then you become a, uh, uh, you become like a, a Newfoundlander. It's really cool to do. We did it. We did it on our first record. I think the first time we went there, and it was it was pretty cool. Can't wait to see you in Deadwood. Yeah, me me too, man. I'm excited that I'm on in Deadwood. What what are you talking about? The uh, this I actually didn't get in Ireland. I got this in Ireland. Um, me and our uh, one of our crew guys we were in Dublin on a day off, and I said, I'm getting a tattoo in Ireland, man. So I got my family crest done. It's a simplified version of a Connolly crest, which is Irish. Um, I think it, coming from the Monaghan County. If anyone that's Irish knows where that is. So, uh, what is it? You kiss the cod. Did you kiss the cod? Yeah, I kissed the cod. It's just a fro the fish, and then you just have to kiss it. It's so cool. And then they give you actually a, a thing. I don't think I have it anymore, but they give you like an actual thing you can put on your wall saying you've been screeched in as an 
honorary Newfoundlander. It's pretty cool. But I got it done. Me and the crew guy went and got tattoos, and we just went to a place off the street, which is very dangerous because you don't know if they're any good. It really is tough to find a good tattoo. So we just went for it, and he got something, and his was terrible. His was terrible, and I got my guy was so good. He he took so long to do this uh, to the point where I was like, dude, please stop. But you know what? I'm glad because he did such an amazing job. There's not one mistake, and there's a lot of these shells that have little tiny lines. And I tell you, man, they are all perfect. There's not one that is like, and it healed amazing. There's not any scarring or anything. So for me, every tattoo I have, there's something that's like a little like missing a spot that I have to get touched up. Every, all my tattoos but this one it's like it's perfect so shout out to that irish dude that i have no fucking idea when you coming to brazil i don't know brazil is that uh am i correct and brazil speaks portuguese and the rest speak spanish is that true i think it might be right there uh our old manager Years ago, Elizabeth Hahn, she married a Brazilian, and I think her name was Elizabeth, but in Brazil, they pronounce Elizabeth Elizabeth. So his family called her Elizabeth. <laughs> so awesome. We never called her that because she wasn't. She was fantastic. Anyone Irish dance in your family? We all do the Irish j jig. Um, we do it every every Christmas. Uh, no, we don't, unfortunately. I want more tattoos. I might be done on tattoos. I don't know, man. I mean, there's lots of places left to put them. I think the next tattoo I'm going to use is on my face. I mean, if you're going to do a tattoo, just get a freaking face tattoo. Start on the face. Teardrop. Maybe, depending on how people you've killed in jail. Um, then... I think something like here. I just started following this really disgusting Instagram. It's called Snake Pit. It, it's it's messed up. So be warned. Maybe take a gander first before you join it. But it's all bad tattoos. But there are a lot of them are are like sexual tattoos. They're just so bad. Like people just draw like tattoo dicks on them and stuff. But it's really funny. And a lot of them are like really bad face tattoos. Like people that put like weed or something across their forehead it's good I, I would say give it you know give it a try where do you think will be most painful to get a tattoo most painful uh anywhere there's bone is the worst so anywhere where like elbow um is insane armpit back of the arm is insane it just really feels like someone has a lighter and they're just doing this the whole time but um, arm is nothing. You don't feel anything on the arm. But uh, yeah, like wrist, the bone here, terrible. Terrible. So painful. But uh, getting tattoos is not fun. It's just it's just pain and it's... Yeah, ribcage I heard is, is terrible. Um, yeah. And, ter and sometimes like one... Like this one tattoo I have here was 20 hours. Not in one sitting, but... Like you get four hours to have a tattoo, it's it's just it's torture. So so yeah, I've been tortured before, so I can take torture. <laughs> How often do you check your DMs? Not, well, I, you know what? Not too often, honestly. Like when, I, like there's D, a bunch of DM requests, but not too often. Uh, I do have people on DM that I I check like you know daily that I'm friends with. But uh, I'm just trying to get better at it. I'm trying to get better with the DMs, but it's 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 you you get into something where you can't. It's hard because then you have to continue to um, follow up, and that becomes like a. It's it's tough. It's tough to do once you start. So, thank you for your time, Ty. Yeah, you got it. It'd be cool to do this like once a week. Maybe I can perform a song. Maybe I can have someone on here. I could bring in someone from the band, or maybe someone from another band. I saw someone put Fozzy. It'd be cool to have Chris on here or some of the guys from Fozzy. Another band we've toured with. Cool story with Chris is we uh, we played in Columbus. 
and it was on it's i think it's like on campus there it's this old theater that you play every time i think it's the newport music hall there's a only a couple venues in columbus one is the other it's either express express live or um i can't remember what it's called but uh or a american eagle it's one of those two it's either that or it's the newport music hall and that one is actually close or it's on the university grounds so like the the football stadium is right near there and um the venue is next to all of the fraternities and stuff so like our bus parks in front of like a fraternity house like lambda 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 and you can see all the greek letters like all, all the houses so after our show one night we we just like wanted to, we crashed a fraternity party and we uh it was like some band guys and 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 chris jericho and uh we crawled up on the roof and we went there and they were like playing like beer pong just a bunch of like nerds and we're like come on guys so we brought like took their speakers out on the roof we crawled out on the roof and we cranked up some music and it was a lot of fun uh it was good memories uh fozzy and theory uk tour you never know um have you ever heard of Sven, the new Sven Gali? No, but Sven Gali, wow, what a throwback there. Sven Gali. Sven Gali, wow. I wonder if you're Canadian. Hi. Yeah, so um bring Josh Ramsey on. Yeah, he's uh he's a hoot. I haven't I haven't seen him in a little while, but he's a talented dude. And uh yeah, Marianne's is good. Uh, that's a good band. Um they're always kicking butt. Any songs in Spanish? No, but... But I should... The last song. What's cool about our fans is that they it's not just one song you don't it's not like just like the same song over and over and over and it's like god god you know you guys like every song is different it's amazing someone said heaven i saw an all or nothing it's great out of my head i haven't played out of my head in a while most memorable gig good or bad there's there's tons of good there's not a lot of bad back in the day like we play like we played some shows where like there was three people or eight people there like on the first record and we would finish performing and then we would just w jump off the front of the stage and then just go have a beer with fans and we would like we'd be like hey how many shirts we sell tonight they're like you sold two shirts and we're like all right all right <laughs> and it's kind of cool to actually go through that um because it's like it's kind of grounding and it kind of helps you build and then when you see it grow slowly over time we weren't one of those bands that just blew up overnight it just grew and grew and i don't know it's uh, it's kind of cool and you know what's even cooler is that i think those fans that were there since the beginning are kind of like i remember seeing you guys at some venue at some shitholes a strip club in new jersey and there was like 20 people there and you just hung out afterward and i'm like yeah that's awesome. So, I don't know. I like that stuff. I always like hearing uh, stories from fans. And sometimes I feel bad because I don't remember. And I and then sometimes I'll pretend I do. But a lot of times, believe it or not, I do remember a ton of gigs. And people are surprised. Like, you remember that? I'm like, yep. I remember exactly this. And I remember what happened. And, blah, 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 and the band opened for us. They're like, wow. But it's cool, man. Authentic bands last when they have authentic musicians. And authentic Fans, too. Right? I don't know. I think that's cool. But uh, you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to leave it there. It's almost 1 o'clock. I got to prep for Yahtzee with my mom. I got I to gotta seriously get like 400 points and throw it in my mother's face when I beat her at Yahtzee. 
But that's literally what I'm doing today. I'm playing Yahtzee. It's, it's Sunday. I might do some painting. Got a bunch of house projects. And uh, honestly, start maybe working on some some new tunes or some covers or something. Um, yeah, and stay tuned for any news updates on touring. We obviously want to get out there. I know a lot of people have been asking. Do you still keep in touch with Chris, Daut Chris Daughtry? No, I haven't talked to Chris in a while. Um, yeah, I... Uh, we're the worst. We're, we're musicians are the worst. It's interesting because we all like are friends with one another, but you know, it's not like a, a, a stay in contact as you call every day and be like, what's up? But when you see each other, it's like a day hasn't passed. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's just, a uh, it's an interesting life we lead, but, uh, yeah, I'm really bad at communicating with, and everyone, we all are, we all do our own thing when we get home, but yeah, I got to stretch for Yahtzee to limber up. Yeah, I'm going to do some uh, some frog stuff, you know, get some glute activation, maybe do some, uh, you know, hip flexor exercises to get into it. So, But uh, thanks, guys, for coming out. I'm going to um, do this again, maybe do it once a week, and I'll think of some cool stuff to do next time. Uh, maybe have somebody on. might be fun. So we'll see you guys soon. Bye.